What's going on Savvy Family? Kellen back again and in today's video I'm talking about 10 savvy ways that you can save on your utilities that you can do today. They're going to save you 25 to 50 percent off your monthly bill. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in the snow. Please like the video. We want to get this out to more people to be money savvy and save money. <gasps> So obviously after jumping in the snow, I want to make sure that you can trust me. I used to be a certified home inspector, went to school, got certified, started practicing. Um, so these are our tips and tricks that we've used over the last decade or so of being homeowners as well as my experience and education as being a home inspector. And some further proof, we have our bill here. We own a 2400 square foot house and as you can see our previous bill in October was $76 and in November with the cold temperatures coming around was $125. Wow. We like to keep our bill right around $100. Um, I'm sure that over the winter it's going to fluctuate, but let's get right into these tips. Number 10, and please stay till the end because the last couple are going to be really, really important for you to really save that 25 to 50%. So without further ado, number 10 is phantom electricity. Whether you know it or not, when you plug in your appliances or your computers or your TVs, there's always an electric draw on those devices. So a simple way to combat that is just unplug them. If it's a device that you're not using all the time, we use our pressure cooker here maybe once or twice a week, um, unplug it. It takes two seconds and when you want to use it again, you can plug it back in. And that way there's not electricity flowing through it where you're wasting your money. Another important thing with Phantom Energy is turning off your huge electric devices like your computer, putting them to sleep when you are not using them. Another big draw on your Phantom Energy is your TV. A lot of TVs nowadays, the smarter TVs, have intelligent sensors that can sense what is playing and what's the lighting around it so you can optimize your energy usage. Another big one is consoles, Xboxes, Playstations. Make sure that they are turned all the way off, not on standby, and that way they are not pulling and drawing that phantom power. All right, number nine is turning off the lights when you leave a room and replacing them with more efficient LED lights. We bought the Sylvania pack of 24 off Amazon. It's like 20 bucks, so it's less than a dollar per LED light, and the payback period is like less than a year. So when you're leaving a room, don't leave all the lights on. There's no reason to have all these lights on, uh, especially during the day when you can have natural light. So turn them off and use that natural light, baby. All right, number eight is running a full load of laundry every time you do laundry. There's no point in doing small loads. It's gonna cost you the same amount to do a large load versus a small load. So you might as well just load that sucker up. Another thing is you always wanna make sure you're using, utilizing cold water. There's no reason to really be using hot water unless it's really soiled um, clothing. And in that case, you probably do wanna disinfect and use hot water. But you can use cold water. It's actually better for the clothes. It's not gonna shrink things as much. And another tip, since we're on washer dryer thing, make sure that your lint trap is clean. This one is pretty good. Brittany does a good job of that. But both those things will make it run efficient and save you money. All right, back in the kitchen, number seven is using your dishwasher every single day. Uh, whether you have a small load or a large load, it's way more efficient to use a dishwasher than hand wash things. Obviously you have to hand wash big pots and pans, but anytime you can run your dishwasher, it's not only gonna save you money, but it's a good system to have to run it every night before you go to bed so you wake up with a clean kitchen and get off to a good day. All right, number six is reducing your overall water usage. Now, whether you like taking long showers or keeping the water on when you're shaving or brushing your teeth, all these things add up, you're wasting a lot of water and water's a precious resource, so don't waste it. Be green. So, a couple things you can do. Take a quicker shower. There's no need to take 10 minute shower. You can get cleaned much faster. You can replace the shower head. Uh, we replaced ours, I think it's like 15 bucks. It's a slower flow, but it's actually more power coming onto you, so it's easier to get clean. You can also change out the aerators on your sinks so that it's more of a slow flow. And then just be conscious of how much water you are using when you're brushing your teeth, taking a shower, and just try to reduce it as much as possible. Another hack that you can do is you can actually put a brick inside the back of your toilet to replace some of the water that's in there. And every time you flush, you're gonna not use as much water when you're flushing. So just another hack on saving water. All right, now we are getting into the nitty gritty of things that you can do to really save your money. Um, and most of them have to do with heating, cooling, and water heater. So we're gonna go over those systems and I'm gonna teach you some ways to save on those. So number five is turning down your water heater. You want your water to be warm enough, but you don't need it scolding. You're, you're not gonna heat your water up to a temperature that you can't even use. It's just a waste of energy. So on almost every single water heater, there is a panel that you can turn down. Um, it's either gonna be behind a panel or in front. Ours is super simple, it's right here. 
um, and you just turn it to a lower setting and the goal is to get water temperature right about 120 um, that's right where you want it which is going to be comfortable and usable and not overheating for no reason um, it's also a safety precaution if you have kids at home you do not want hot hot water that can burn them so one of the biggest things you can do turn down your water heater save you a lot of money all right, number four is checking and replacing your air filter within your furnace. You want every machine and every system in your house to be running as efficient as possible, so these should be replaced every three months or so. So first thing you wanna do is turn off the power. A lot of times there's a electrical switch outside of the furnace. If not, you can go to your electric box and turn it off there. And you are simply going to open it up and check inside. And like I said, make sure you turn the power off. You do not want sticking your hands in here. So if you look closely here, our air filter is right here. It's gonna be coming, all the air down the return duct is gonna be here. Um, and we have a reminder every three months to replace that. It's gonna be something that really helps the air flow through the furnace and be as, as optimal as possible. And what we do is we buy in bulk more air filters right off Amazon, super cheap to do. And it just gives you the ability to replace them whenever they're needed and not have to go and search for them. They're at the house ready to go. Um, and that's a huge, huge win for your furnace. Okay, and another one to add to your efficiency of heating or cooling your house is following your air ducts all the way back and under each one, you'll have a damper that you can turn on and off, going to each room, to where every air duct comes out into each room. So what you can do is figure out and optimize which rooms you want more heat in. So upstairs in our bedrooms, we want a lot of heat. Um, so when we're sleeping at night or hanging out, they are on, same thing with the living room. But areas like our offices or bathrooms, we can turn the heat way down so that it does, it's not heating up areas that we're not living in and using all the time. That way that you're optimizing the rooms and the temperatures within the rooms that you are using more often. All right, number three is buying a programmable thermostat. Now we choose the Nest. We've used it the last five, 10 years, and it's really helped us save a lot of money on our utilities. Uh, by doing this and using a program programmable thermostat, it's going to make it so that your temperatures go up and down at the most optimum times. It's going to make it so it's efficiently running when it needs to be running and keep you guys comfortable within your house. So when you're sleeping at night, it's proven that when the temperatures are lower, you're going to sleep better. So it will automatically turn down the temperature when you set it up correctly um, so that you can sleep better. And during the day, it's going to keep you nice and warm or nice and cool, depending on where you live. Um, but nice thing about the Nest, and like I said, that's one we recommend, is it automatically learns by itself. So it will understand your routine, and it's called the Nest Smart Learning System. It will understand your routine, understand what temperatures you like. It will automatically optimize when the furnace is on, when the AC is on, to avoid um, the times of the day where everyone else is, and that's the highest premium from your electric company to run your systems at that time. So super simple to buy, super simple to set up. I'm gonna zoom in and show you some of the features. So we live in upstate New York and temperatures get very cold in the winter. We like to keep our house right around 66 to 68 degrees, which some of you might think we're crazy for doing that. Um, but you can see the nest is showing that the leaf is on, which means we are saving money by having it at that temperature. Basically you can come into here and it automatically tells you what your temperature is, what the weather is outside, so it can optimize to heat or cool your system with taking into account the weather. Um, it tells you what your humidity is in your house and all that stuff. Um, it also has home and away assist, which means that when you leave the house for an extended period of time, say you go on vacation, forgot to turn the house down, it's automatically gonna put it at the setting that you want to keep your temperatures low or keep your temperatures high, depending on where you live. Um, it also has Nest Sense, which we will click into. So you can do auto scheduling, you can do time to temperature, early on, sunblock, all of these cool features that are gonna help you save money over the time. And I just went over changing our air filter. It will automatically remind you to change your air filter, um, which is a very nice feature. One of my favorite features is that it does come with a app. So you can set up your app so you can be upstairs and turn the heat up or down. You can be away from the house. Um, so say it went on auto away, you can come back to a nice warm or cool house um, right from the app, which is super, super convenient. And all these features are gonna help you save time and money. Now, this is a pretty expensive thermostat, so I think new ones run around $250 now. So your best bet is to look for a used one on Facebook Marketplace, or if you want to bite the bullet, you can invest in saving money, and over two or three years, it's gonna easily pay itself back, and then some, and it's gonna help you save a lot of money. 
Now number two is making sure that your house is nice and sealed and insulated, that there's no leaks because when you are trying to optimize your heating and cooling system, when there's leaks in the house, you're literally throwing money out the window. So something like this that I just found in our house needs to get sealed up. These windows are really old, but as you can see, there's a big crack there where air is getting out and there's lots of snow on the ground. So we're literally throwing money out the window. Another place to look and make sure that there's a good seal is underneath your doors. It's not only gonna help you save money, but it's gonna keep those critterly crawlies, I don't know what I tried to say there, those critters out of your house. Um, also bought these on Amazon, they're just a weather strip, super easy to install, um, but that's gonna keep the nice seal underneath your doors, in your windows, and make sure that you're saving that money. All right, number one, the one that you've all been waiting for that has a huge impact on your monthly utility bill is turn down your heat. So, I said that we like to keep ours from 68 to 66. Uh, we really like to keep it at 66 because it saves a lot of money. Now, every degree that you go down with your temperature, say you have it at 72, if you go down to 68, you're gonna save 3% per degree you go down, which is a huge savings right off the bat um, immediately especially if you have a programmable thermostat, when you turn the heat down at night, it's gonna save so much money. So turn down the heat. Um, if you're in a hot location down south, first of all, I'm jealous. Second of all, make sure that you don't have the AC cranking all the time at 70 degrees. Be okay at 75, 72. Um, and you can always take off clothes or add clothes, which is gonna save you money versus having your heating and cooling system running all the time. That is my number one tip that will save you lots and lots of money. All right, Savvy Family, that is the video. Please, if you're excited about saving money and you found value in this video, hit the thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it. Consider subscribing for more Savvy Money Saving Tips and check out our site, thesavvycouple.com. We will see you on the next video. Peace.